All right, so you have 5G home internet and you have internet dropouts that you want to figure out. Why are they happening? How can you fix them? And this really applies to both T-Mobile as well as Verizon home internet. You know, most of the complaints actually here are centered around the T-Mobile ones. And I've had this for several years. I've been very involved in trying to figure out um, all the uh, tricks and tips for this kind of stuff. So, you know, if you haven't watched my channel, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. And I do all kinds of videos out there, um, and a lot of them are on this 5G home internet, but also technology, outdoor stuff, and smart home things. So be sure to uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more about it. Now, for this one, I'm just going to hit on a, a couple of the topics. You might have to watch my other videos to get more in the details of them. So the first one that I've seen that happens um, very commonly is the DNS server. So I have not had very good luck with T-Mobile's DNS server. And that is what translates your uh, request to go to a website to an actual address for it to do. So if that drops out, I've seen things like my Google Home devices, which there's one back behind me, um, think that I'm not connected to the Internet, but I actually am. And, th and in that case, you'd see some like weird things going on. Maybe your TV says, hey, you're not on the Internet, or maybe your tablet says you're, you're connected to Wi-Fi, but you're not getting Internet that could be a dns and so for that you can fix it by setting up a custom dns server now unfortunately you can't do that on the device itself on the gateways that they provide you you can do it with your own router if you have another wi-fi router hooked up or a lot of devices can have a setting in there that you can specify a unique dns server i'm not going to go into how to do that in this video though another thing that could be happening that is a little bit simpler to fix is the wi-fi switching so these gateways have Wi-Fi 6 or better on them, and they have two different uh, frequency bands, a 2.4 gigahertz band and a 5 gigahertz band. And by default, they're set up where it's the same SSID, and your device would seamlessly roam between the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz based on what is best for it. The problem is that doesn't always work very well or seamlessly, and your device might be switching between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. For some devices, they can lose internet connection when they do that. It kind of depends on. So the way you can fix that is by separating out uh, the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and then have your device just connect to a specific one. I got videos on that uh, for each of the T-Mobile gateways on my um, on my channel that you can see. The other thing that I've seen is a tower like a cell tower hopping or changing, or even the actual cell on the tower. A given tower actually have lots of cells that your um, gateway can connect to. So if that happens, your gateway can lose its connection temporarily, you know, just for like a split second or a, a second or two while it switches. And that can then obviously disrupt all your devices. They think they, they lost the internet because they did. And the best way to fix that is by placing your gateway in a place where it gets a consistent signal and it's not competing for two different towers going diff two different ways or even if it's um, switching bands so that would be a different cell on the same tower if it's going between say n41 band to n71 band on 5g then that can cause it to lose connection as well so you would do that by placing it in a place that it uh, no longer is fighting uh, two different ones or you can do things like add an external antenna to this so you give it a stronger signal and it doesn't have to or try to uh, to switch so that's another thing that um, can cause the internet dropouts to happen all right so the other thing that i've seen happen is the gateways getting too hot now this was very common with the nokia one the the cylindrical one, um, it's been a little bit less common with the Arcadian and the Sagemcom units that are out there today, but all of them are very um, sensitive to heat and they are passively cooled. So there's no cooling fan in them and it just relies on the heat to rise and there's heat sinks in there. But depending on your situation, where you place them, especially if you place them in any kind of hot environment, you put them in the attic, I do not recommend it. Some people put them outside, they put them in an enclosure. Um, or if they put them in a large window that has a lot of direct sunlight, just that sunlight can heat up the unit as well. So all of that can cause the unit to get hot and the modem will start to actually shut down. So if it gets overheated, it will actually start to cut its performance down and slow it down. So there's lots of people, including myself, that uh, have put fans on these to actively cool them 
and that does improve it. So that's another place that you can do. Also, if you turn off the Wi-Fi, which I've videos how to do that, and have your own um, get, uh, router hooked up to it, then that reduces the amount of heat that they make. So that also helps with that, that factor as well. So um, that's something else you can do. The last thing is, of course, actually T-Mobile's network. Um, it could be having problems. They could be doing updates to it, upgrades. I know they, they kind of give that spill a lot if you were to call in or check go. We're doing, you know, um, updates to your network. But a lot of times it is actually true because they are really blazing a way of trying to improve their network, Verizon as well for that matter. And therefore I've seen more inconsistency go on with their network and performance. So that one you can't really fix other than maybe calling in to customer service and at least complaining to them so that um, they're aware that they are disturbing the customers. So hopefully that helps. That That's the tip of the iceberg for a quick short video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer them. And then, of course, check out the rest of my videos with more details and more in-depth.